Howdy guys, Andy Pixel here. And uh, in this video, I wanted to show you another procedural modeling tip that really comes up quite often. I get tons and tons of questions about um, individuals having problems you know, with the directions on their curves and how to use the directions in the sweep node and how to use it in the copy to points node. And so uh, I wanted to make a whole video about you know just generating the curve directions that are so important when you're doing procedural modeling. And so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how to uh, produce uh, this particular um, curve here that has all the proper directions for when you're using things like the sweep node um, or even when you're doing your own like skinning and uh, copy to points these are very very important and learning how to control these particular vectors uh, or directions inside of Houdini for your procedure models for Houdini engine or whatever you're doing inside of Houdini um, is very crucial to um, producing proper procedural modeling along curves so let's take a look all right, so let's dive into learning a little bit about the curve direction. So I'm going to call this new geo container curve directions like so. And we're going to jump inside by hitting enter. You can also double click. Now let's create a curve that we can uh, work with. So we don't need to get all fancy with this or anything like that. I am actually going to go into my top view by hitting uh, spacebar two. And I'm going to turn on my snapping. Now you notice that the uh, Grid numbers aren't on. I've noticed it's a bug with the Houdini. If you just toggle in and out, they come back. So I'm going to zoom back in here and uh, let's just create some crazy curve like that. You can always go and select these points by moving around. Just click on them, then move them around. There we go. Very cool. All right, so I'm going to hit spacebar one on the keyboard and hit enter again. I'm going to actually move these guys up and down a little bit here. Uh, because we want to make sure that our curve directions actually follow um, the curve when it goes up and down like that. So we want to make proper curve directions. It's really useful when you start using the sweep node or you're you know, using the copy to points node. Um, it actually comes in handy so much. That's why it's a good thing to have in your uh, toolbox. All right, so with that done, let's go and drop down a resample node, a handy resample node. And I'm going to resample this to a length of one. So for every one meter or one unit here inside of Houdini, uh, we're going to get a point along the curve. So let's actually switch this over to subdivision curve so we get something that's kind of smooth like so. All right, very cool. All right, so uh, to get these curve directions uh, created, let's go and drop down a attribute wrangle node. Now, you don't have to do it with an attribute wrangle node. You could do it with a point bop node. Um, I'm just more comfortable with um, VEX, and so you're more than welcome to do it in a point bop. I might actually show that here um, once I finish the VEX version. So I'm going to call this guy Curve Durs, and uh, let's dive inside of our VEX code here. So the way this works is um, we need actually to generate a direction normal that actually follows the curve here. And to do that, it's really easy. You can go to the um, resample node here and turn on the tangent attribute and just um, type in uh, capital N, that stands for normal. And you might not be able to see it. It's really tiny just because the curve's really big. You can uh, make those guys bigger if you just hit D on the keyboard with your mouse over the scene view here. And you can actually increase the size. So you can see that we now have a normal or a vector direction or a line, if you will, uh, that is following the direction of the curve as it turns and twists and stuff. All right, so we want to use that as our base. Okay, so the way this works is we need to create a, um, a normal that is actually flat in the Y direction. So we'll try to step through this just to make it easier to understand. So I'm going to call this ve vector uh, flat norm. That's what I usually uh, call it. And this is going to be equal to the current normal. So we're just initializing it now to this current flow direction normal. And then we want to go and say flat norm dot y is equal to zero. And that'll flatten it out. Now, um, we can actually go and uh, view this here. If we were to turn this into a attribute, currently this particular variable right here is uh, just a local variable, right? To turn it into an, an attribute that we can actually use, uh, we need to put a V and then an at symbol in front of it. So it's a vector. That's what the V stands for. And the at symbol turns it into an attribute that gets then put onto the geometry spreadsheet here. So you have it here in the geometry spreadsheet. And then we can go and visualize it. If you, hit, if you select the attribute wrangle node and then hit X on the keyboard, you will create a visualize node there. And uh, then we can go and visualize that uh, flat norm. So I'm doing this just so you guys can see what we're doing the whole time here. And um, it currently exists on the point, so you need to set the class to points. Uh, the marker needs to be set, or the type needs to be set to marker. And then the style needs to be set to uh, vector. 
you can see now we've taken our original norma that's following the the curve and we've flattened it out in y all right so this is the first step into getting these guys working here all right so then uh now that we've flattened it out we actually need to go and normalize it so we need to say flat norm is equal to normalize flat norm and the reason why we're doing this is we want to keep all of our vectors um in a uh zero to or yeah in a zero to one range and I need to go and put the uh, at symbol in front of here because it is an attribute like so. There we go. All right, so now we're normalized. And we're really just doing that so all of our vectors have a length of one. Right? It just makes it easier when you're, you're not going to incur any sort of errors or anything like that when you're doing um, any of the uh, operations we're going to do here in just a second. All right, so now that we've got this particular vector in place, we want to develop the right vector. So. We want to develop a vector that actually points outwards from the curve. All right, and so to do that, we just say v at right. Again, we're making it a, an attribute so we can visualize it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the cross product of the up vector, so 0, 1, 0. So that's literally a vector pointing up in y here in space. All right, so it's just a standard vector pointing upwards. And then we want to uh, put in the flat norm for this. So the cross product will give you a um, a vector that is perpendicular to two vectors, right? So in this case, I'm taking the up vector and this flat vector, and what it'll do is it'll give us a right vector, right? So it'll be perpendicular. So one thing you can do in these visualize nodes is you can add um, other visualize um, markers in here. And so if you hit this little duplicate button here, and then in the drop down, you'll see you have a second version here. Uh, what we can do now is we can look at the right vector. So I'm going to do right. And we need to make sure we turn it on. All right, so now we have that perpendicular vector. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. We have one vector that's pointing with the direction of the curve, and then we have the up vector, and we're taking the cross product of that, and that gives us this perpendicular vector towards it. So now if we look, you can see we have a, a nice vector that's pointing always outwards from the curve. It's very useful in many situations. All right, so then the last vector that we need is the um, up vector. So I'm going to say v at up is equal to the cross product of at n. So remember, at n is our actual flow direction, normal. And then we also want to do at right. So that'll give us a perpendicular vector that points um, perpendicular to the curve. So it'll point upwards. All right, so let's add another one of these guys. Let's go to number three here. And I'm going to set this one up and make sure to set it to active. And there you go. You can color code these two. So if you come into the marker color and just change it to green, uh, let's go to the right and let's change this guy to red. It's the common colors for these guys. And uh, let's go to the first one and let's just turn it off now. So now we've got all the uh, vectors that we need for curves. So when you pump this into a sweep node, and this just comes up you know, so many times when I'm uh, creating my courses and I get questions about, you know, issues with curves and stuff like that. Um, and the sweep node not uh, creating a proper sweep. It's usually, usually comes down to these uh, curve directions. So you can see now our geometry is following along very nicely. Um, you know, the sweep node does try to, to produce that type of geometry uh, by default, but you're going to run into a lot of situations where it doesn't. And so generating these curve directions uh, will always get you this result. It's always a good idea. So, you know, once you get this all typed out, you can come up here to this little cog wheel up here and go uh, save preset. You can see I already have one here. Go save C save preset and then just call this uh, curve underscore dir and then just say save preset and it sets it to your Houdini user pref uh, file, which is inside of your documents, Houdini folder. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. So for those of you who want to see the point bop uh, node version, so let's drop down a point bop node here and uh, let's just do the same process so you can see, you know, how you would do it without VEX, right? So to, we need to go and dive inside. So the first thing we have to do is uh, we need to go and break up our normal here. So what I, what I need to do is go and drop down a vector to float node and we're going to pump in the uh, normal there and then we need to go do another float to uh, vector and um, just pump in the X and the Z because we want our Y value to be zero. So if I were to put this into the normal now um, here, 
and take a look at my normals, you can see we get that same result that we saw with the flat norm. Right, so that's our flat normal right there. So then all we really need to do is um, create a constant here. So let's create a constant value. And this allows us to create that uh, world up vector. So we need to set that up right here. So this guy right here is the equivalent of setting up this constant value. So we're gonna go and create a vector and initialize it to zero, one, zero. All right, so now we have that up vector. So uh, we need to take the cross product now. And so there's a note for that. We just take the cross product and uh, we just wanna match the vex code that we wrote. So I'm gonna pump this guy in for the first element there and this for the second element. And so now we have our uh, right vector. All right, so now you have the right vector here. Pretty cool. But I don't wanna actually override my normals. I want to keep the uh, original normal that we have and so uh, we don't really need this geometry output node so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, create a new bind uh, export this is how you um, create attributes with the point bob node so we're going to bind export meaning we're going to bind it to the geometry so for every point we're going to bind it export it so that way we can see it in the geometry spreadsheet and so what we need to do is set the type to a vector and we're going to give it a name of uh, right and once we do that you can see we have this vector attribute here now on each one of those points. Pretty cool. Um, and let's go jump up now and take a look at the rest. Um, all we need to do now is take the current normal and the right vector and do a cross product with that to create the up attribute. So I'm going to dive back into the point pop node. So this is our right vector here. Uh, this is our original normal right here. So all we really need to do is do another cross product and we're going to do um, our normal for the first input here. And we're going to do our cross product with our right vector and that becomes now our up vector so if I pump this in you can see now we have our up vector going all right so not really a lot of notes but if you prefer to do it uh, in a visual programming way rather than uh, with vex that is how you would do it all right so last thing we really need to do here is drop down another bind export node and uh, bind and export this guy to the points call it up for the attribute name and we will then make it a vector. And at this point, I'm just gonna cut that wire. We can get rid of this geometry output node. We don't need it because we're just bind exporting right here. So that is the only output from this particular point bob node. So if we pump in our point bob node into our visualize node, we should get the same exact result. All right, so if I were to just switch between these two, we get the same result. And look at that, we're actually getting, this actually proves why you should normalize your vectors. Um, so watch what, as I switch these guys the lengths of the vectors are different and that will affect your um, procedural modeling. And so we need to go and um, actually fl uh, normalize this flattened vector here. So we need to drop down a normalized node and just run that through like so. There we go. So now if I switch these guys out, you don't see any difference. It is exactly the same. So that's how you do it with code. And uh, that is how you do it with a point pop. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks so much. So now let's take a look at a practical example of using these curved directions. So one really great example here is um, a little tool I made to create uh, roller coasters. And uh, this makes you know, heavy use of a curve. And so you need all the curved directions you know, worked out, um, especially when you wanna do things like the banking and uh, when you wanna make sure that, like in this case, when I make uh, this uh, loop here, you wanna make sure that the tracks you know, are actually upside down. And so understanding how to create your curve directions is very important when you're doing these procedural models for Houdini engine and, and Houdini in, in general. So any sort of procedural modeling task, you're gonna encounter these uh, particular direction vectors. And so hopefully uh, it helps to see, you know, how you could apply what you just learned throughout this video. If you're interested in more uh, quick tips and tricks or, you know, full courses and stuff, uh, check out my Patreon page. It's at uh, patreon.com forward slash IndiePixel. Thanks so much.